is uh, we're getting 2016 up and running. We thought it'd be good to bring in a friend of ours, uh, Bob Burns from Coldwell Banker Mid America Group Realtors. He's the president of that organization to talk a little bit about what happened last year in 2015. Absolutely. So 2015 was uh, by any measure a breakout year for housing. Uh, when, when you look at the housing market, it operates in cycles of typically 10 years. This last cycle was maybe 15 years. It was a little bit more protracted. Mm -hmm. So uh, various cycles of the housing market, what we look at is the number of homes that sold. So in 2015, uh, I'm happy to report that we in central Iowa uh, have now set a new peak for the number of homes that have sold. So mm. 2006 was the prior peak of, of the housing market. We went through the recession that we all remember, mm -hmm. went through the recovery that we all uh, remember, and 2015 was the first year where we surpassed the total number of homes sold at the prior peak in 2006. So now we go into expansion mode. Uh, about 13,000 homes here in central Iowa sold in 2015, wow. uh, which was about 16% uh, more than 2006 and 18% more than 2014. So by any measure, housing market is expanding. Well, it's the mortgage housing. rates obviously had a, a bunch to do with that. Well, the, the rates absolutely did and do because rates drive affordability, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. But employment is typically what you look at that drives housing. So employment here in central Iowa has been extremely strong. Uh, if you look at Des Moines Metro Data com, they provide a lot of great employment statistics and uh, two things are driving the uh, gro growth in housing for us. One of them is uh, a growing workforce. So our workforce here in central Iowa has been growing at a two to three percent annual rate. So more and more workers are coming here to uh, Greater Des Moines. So this is where I I've always wondered they build, you know, we work downtown. We see all these apartment <laughs> complexes. <laughs> Constantly all these just always being it, built. When uh, one state being taken down, they're like, let's make that into apartments. It, you know, you I know, live right? out in Western Urbandale and they, they, all this building out there I'm like, where are these people coming from? So they are coming into Des Moines for, for work. A absolutely. Our, our workforce is growing, but but the, the double effect is workforce is growing, and at the same time, unemployment is going down. So uh, as of the end of November, we don't have December's numbers yet, unemployment in uh, metropolitan Des Moines was 2.9%, wow. which, which is really, really low, especially compared to the to the national number. So, so we are in a great place from an employment perspective, and the more people have jobs making an income, the more people will buy homes, move up, and uh, and continue to drive the real estate market. And speaking of moving up, some of these homes and apartments aren't inexpensive either, so they're obviously getting good jobs. Right, they're getting good jobs, and that, that's the kind of the big question that economists are out there talking about right now is, uh, although unemployment is falling, is underemployment a factor in, in the marketplace? Right. And uh, are wages growing at, at an appropriate rate? So uh, when you look at wages, you look at the median sale price for homes, you look at the interest rate, all of those things kind of mixed together in a pot, talks, uh, uh, we'll, we'll tell you about affordability. So you look at prices, you look at wages, you look at interest rates, and that that you know affordability is is kind of the the key measurement that tells you how easy or how difficult is it to buy a home. Well, as you might imagine, in 2006, at the peak of the housing market, affordability was at its lowest here in in central Iowa. Uh, affordability in 2014 and in 2015, because of prices, wages, and that really really favorable interest rate, affordability was really high unprecedented levels of affordability. So so we're in great shape from an affordability standpoint here in, in metropolitan Des Moines. Uh, in order to get back to that kind of trough of affordability like we saw in 2006, uh, interest rates would have to double, prices would have to go up about 25 percent, and wages would have to remain stagnant. So we talked about 2015 being a breakout year for housing right. and we're in expansion mode. The first you know question mark that people have in their mind is where's the ceiling? Is, are we in for another bubble? Is there still room to grow and when you look at affordability there's a lot of room for housing to continue to grow here in in central Iowa. Now one of the things we've been uh, and we've talked about this a couple times on the show are, is the price of, um, of, of lots out mm -hmm. there and right. that, that, that it's really gone up. Do you have any any data on that? Right. So, so the builders that we talk to out there around the metro area, wh whether it's uh, you know uh, Hubble or or uh, other other big builders and small builders around Des Moines, will cite three factors that they're looking at in 2016. One is the price of lots. The price of lots is absolutely rising. The second factor that builders 
members will talk about is material costs. Material costs mm -hmm. are going up and they continue to go up. But the mm -hmm. third factor relates back to that employment issue that we discussed before. There's unemployment is very, very low. Uh, skilled labor uh, is really a limiting factor for a lot of the home builders out uh -huh. there. The, the subcontractors, the framing contractors, the elect electricians, the plumbers are part of what's driving uh, new home prices as well. That's so what can we expect going now into 2016? Right, well in 2016 I would expect uh, continued expansion of the market. Uh, when you look at supply, uh, housing supply is going to tell you where prices are going to go in the near future. So in 2015 the median sale price was up versus 14, about 8.5%. It was $165,000 okay. all in metropolitan wide. Uh, when you look at supply, that's the amount of homes that are available. Of course supply and demand, basic economics mm -hmm. like, like we all had to learn. Uh, low supply, high demand, what are prices going to do? Prices are going to go, go up. up. They have to go up. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had uh, very, very low supply in December. Housing supply in December was 3.8 months of supply. Now to give you a little context, six months is considered a balanced supply. Any mm -hmm. more than six months supply is a buyer's market. Any less than six months supply is a seller's market. So uh, 3.8 months supply in December, which was actually lower than the month supply in November. Typically you see month supply in December go up. January January go up. Sure. Last year it went down. So so inventory is tight demand is high, uh, buyers are going to continue to compete for a low amount of inventory that's on the market and that's going to drive prices. So the message is, is if you're a buyer, affordability is at all-time highs, mm -hmm. but if you're a seller, there are a lot of opportunities out there because your home can stand apart. There's not a lot of homes to compete with, especially during these cold winter months. A lot of people say, well, I want to wait till the spring and I want to wait right. till the weather's warm and all of that. If you wait until the spring, all of your neighbors are also waiting to the spring until they <laughs> get more bodies they're trying to get it. Hey, keep mentioning affordability. Are we talking strictly for buying or what about renting? Yeah, renting is a totally different metric and that, that's where it gets really, really interesting because as a renter, one of the things that, that typical renters are going to calculate is does it make more sense for me to keep renting or does it make sense for mm -hmm. me to buy? Well, if prices are going up, they're going up for investors too and if investors' prices are going up, that's going to have to drive rents to go up right. because investors are going to want to meet their, their numbers. So rents are high too. When a buyer or renter is, is trying to look at that, should I stay in my apartment? Should I think about buying? I, I think it makes a lot of sense to look at buying right now because you, you know you look at the Federal Reserve and you look at the, the trend for 10-year Treasury notes, that typically drives interest rates. By the way, people talk about the overnight rate on the Fed a lot for interest rates. That's not the factor to watch. If you really want to predict interest rates, look at Treasury notes. Treasury notes and interest rates hmm. typically run in parallel. So if you look at, at T-bills, you'll, you'll see that interest rates are likely to increase throughout 2016, although no one can predict the future, they may stay the same, they may go down, but uh, upticks in interest rates will bring down affordability. Uh, so now if you're thinking about you know, getting out of that apartment, now might be a smart time to think about getting into the market as, as a buyer. There you go. All well, right, now if people want to get more information uh, on anything you just talked about here today, what do you suggest them doing? Uh, best place to go is, is to talk to one of your, your real estate professionals, obviously a Coldwell Banker real estate professional. We are students of the market at Coldwell Banker. We, we are constantly looking at what the market's doing, where it's going, where it was, to give our clients an advantage, whether you're a buyer or a seller. One last note I want to I make is, is we talked about kind of Metro Des Moines, the city of Des Moines. Mm -hmm. uh, we are making uh, an unprecedented investment in Des Moines. We're about to open an office in the historic East Village. We're the yeah. only major real estate company opening in uh, metropolitan Des Moines. We're very excited about that opening. It's, it's, it's a place that we can use to serve millennial clients and attract millennial real estate professionals. The way that millennials want to buy and sell real estate is a little bit different than, than their uh, prior generational counterparts, and we're building this state-of-the-art office to help um, millennial consumers buy and sell the way they want to buy and sell instead of the way uh, their parents wanted to buy and sell. So you're so. going to have a bunch of agents out there with flannel shirts and beards and you know, <laughs> right, it, erotic it, mustaches. It, and, it'll, yeah. it'll be the hipster real estate <laughs> office. It, it'll, it'll be great. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Get some ray gun shirts on. Yeah, exactly. Oh, perfect. It'll look good. Yeah. Bob, thank you so thank much. You so Happy much. to be here. Thanks for having me good on. Stuff.